In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create realistic camera movement using geometry nodes. Uh, you can already do this without using geometry nodes, and I'll just show you the method that's uh, the official way. So generally what you would do is, you'd go into your camera view at the top here. I'll just press home so we can see that in full. And you go to your graph editor, and you select your camera. Make sure you're on frame one, press I, and we'll add location rotation. And then what you do is click N, and you've got something called modifiers in here. And you can add something called, we've got a short, you've got a few choices. And generally what you're going to use is noise. Now, if we look in here, this is only going to be applied to one modifier, to one um, track at a time. So we've got the X location, Y location and Z location. Then we've also got the rotation. Now, because we're working with a HDRI, we never want to move the camera because if we move the camera, if we just come out of camera mode, you'll see uh, it, it will slide along the HDR. It won't actually move correctly. What you do instead is you look around. So you do this and then everything will stay uh, planted in place. All right. So with that in mind, we want to make sure we don't put anything on the X location or any of the locations, only on the rotation. So we delete this, and then we'll go to the X rotation, and this is going to be sort of, uh, the X is pointing this way, so it's going to be tilting. So if I do R and then X, I'll go into uh, camera, RX, and then you can see it's going to tilt like that. RZ is going to be looking around, and then RY, is looking up and down so really we don't want any tilt we, we wouldn't want well, not too much anyway we would maybe a tiny bit uh, and what we'd do let's go into the z for, for example modifiers and then click on noise and then we turn the scale up and if we play back we've got automatic motion there that's controlled by the noise so if we just zoom out a bit we can see we've got this noise and we can control we can control that by changing the scale so it's slower, changing the strength so it's much more uh, intense, and also the offset so we can slide it along, and the phase so we can just change the phase of it as well. Now the problem with this is, you know, it gets the job done, but it's very lacking in control, uh, and also if I want this to happen on all of them. I've got to move, I've got to recreate this on each track. So you can choose copy, go to the next one, choose paste, and then paste again. And then you've got the same one on all three and you can just offset them. So we've got a slightly different movement. Now that works, but this becomes quite problematic if you then want to turn it off and on for certain parts. So you might want it to stop moving and then uh, start moving again. And then it starts getting really complex because you've got to start adding things like envelopes and limits. and It just gets quite complex quite quickly. You've got to mess about adding different control points and then turning it off and on. So the geometry nodes method, it does take a tiny bit of setup, but it's much more, it's much easier to use and it gives you a lot more power. So let's do that. I'll undo this. And just delete all the keyframes and we're back to where we were you, if you don't have keyframes it, you can't have modifiers so deleting the keyframes will automatically delete the modifiers as well all right so this method we're going to use let's go change this to geometry node editor and let's just come out of camera view and let's have a look what we've got in the scene so we've got the camera, obviously. Uh, I've got a bit of 3D geometry, and I've also set up a, a shadow catcher material for the, for the ground so that we get nice shadows uh, that appear to be casting onto the, onto the ground itself, onto the HDR. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, by the way, I've made this scene available for members um, at 3d-illusions.co.uk. So if you're already a member, you can grab that straight from the download section. And if you're not a member, well then it's time to join because it's coming up for Christmas and I need some money for mince pies. Anyway, so moving on, 
What we need to do is move this camera using geometry nodes. Now the problem is, you can see because it's a camera, we can't add geometry nodes to it. You can't. You can only add geometry nodes to something that's got geometry. And empties and cameras and things and lights, they don't have any geometry. So we need to. This is the the small setup that I spoke about. We need to set up something to uh, control the camera that can be controlled by geometry. So what I'll do Shift A. We're going to add. Let's go with a UV sphere. So as long as it's got geometry, that's fine. We'll click on the camera and do Shift S. And then we want to move the 3D cursor to the selected. And then we'll click on the sphere, Shift S, and then move selection to cursor. So now the sphere is located exactly the same place as the camera. Let's just hide the sphere. We don't really need to see it. So what we need to do now is lock the camera to the sphere. So that when we rotate the sphere, the camera will rotate with it. And the way we can do that, let's just bring it back temporarily. Oh, well, first we're going to select the sphere, go into edit mode, and we need to select three vertices. So I'll select any three vertices, come back out of edit mode, and I'll select the camera, and then I'll select the sphere, and I'll do Shift P, uh, sorry, Control P, and then we're going to choose to parent the camera to the vertices, those three vertices of the sphere. So I'll click on that. And now if I rotate the sphere, you can see the camera is going to rotate with it. And if we now add a geometry nodes, new um, geometry node system to the sphere, and then shift A, S, and then I'll put down a translate or transform rather. So transform node. If I rotate the sphere, then the camera's going to rotate. So we don't need to see that sphere now. Let's turn that off. And anything I'm doing here now is going to rotate the camera. So let's go into camera view and go back into render view. Let's just select that camera temporarily, which is now child of the sphere. So it's going to be inside there. Just want to change the, get rid of this area, either side of the camera. So I go into the viewport display and just turn up this pass apart out. And now we can only see that area. So select the sphere. And what we need to do is change the rotation of this using some something automatic. And the way we're going to do it is with a noise. So just the way we used noise previously in the old way of doing it, we can search for noise. We're going with noise texture. And we're going to plug the color into the rotation. And you'll notice that's turned red. That's telling us we can't plug a field, which is one value for every single element of the sphere. We can't plug that into a single value. So what we need to do is convert it. We'll do Shift A, S, and then Attribute Statistic. We'll plug this, we'll plug the color into the attribute. But before we do that, just because it's annoying if we do this, and then realize it needs to be a vector, we choose vector and then it disconnects them. I think it's a bug, but I'm not sure. Um, anyway, if we plug that in there, we've now got the three colors, the vector coming in. So RGB, a vector basically means three values going into the attribute, which is a position, which is X, Y, Z. So they both got three values. They're both a vector. And if we plug the mean into the rotation. We need to connect the geometry. So make sure we plug the geometry into there. So there's two things we need to do. The first one is we need to control the strength of the effect. So to do that, we'll drop down a vector maths node and plug this in here. And then we can change this to multiply. And this controls the strength of each axis. And we also want to make sure that it goes from, instead of going from zero to one, we want these to go from minus 0.5 to 0.5. And that will ensure that the camera can move in both directions because the noise texture outputs a value of zero to one. So zero would be the current location, so no movement, and one would be to the right. And we want it to be able to move to the left and the right. So we need the left, which is going to be a negative number, and the right, which is going to be a positive number. So we just take that value of zero to one and slide it to the left a bit, and then it can move both ways. So shift A. And then we're going to do vector math again. I'm going to subtract this time. 
You just subtract 0 0.5. So now it's going to be 0 0.5 either way. And if we animate this using hashtag frame, maybe divided by 40. We need to turn these up a little bit, maybe 0.1. You see we're getting a little bit of movement there. Maybe go a bit higher, 0.3. Maybe 0.5. So we're getting a lot of movement, but it's very jittery. And the reason for that is the noise. We need to turn the detail down. And we also need to turn the scale down to something like uh, maybe 0.5. Something like that. So the X, don't forget, was the tilt. So we probably don't want too much of that. I'm going to put that down to 0.1. And if you want a bit of jerkiness, like for example, if you've got a in a car, you can turn the distortion up. I don't want any jerkiness. So that's um, that's basically we've got the same result. But now we've got additional power. What we can do is we can actually keyframe these to easily turn this on and off this effect. So let me open another window. I want this to be the graph editor. And I've not actually tried this, but I'm assuming it's going to work. So the, we've got the geometry node editor here. And this is the, let's just rename this. We'll call this strength. Now, go back to frame one by pressing left, uh, shift and left arrow. That'll take you to frame one. Shift right arrow will take you to the, to the end. And I'm going to have to keyframe these. So what I can do, hover over this and press I. And then we'll come over here. So we need to turn off, only show selected, and we need to turn on, show hidden. On the geometry nodes, and you can see now we've got these three items, the vectors here, so 0, 1, and 2. Uh, yeah, 0, 1, 2, or X, Y, Z. What we can do now, if I play this back, these are automatically going to be set up. To the values that were already in this box. If we change, if we change these all to zero, so if I drag this down to zero, and I'll do the same with the Z. So put them all on zero. We're going to get no movement at all, and that's good because that means basically what we can do. Is control these with adding new keyframes. So just here, if I want it to be turned down, let's say we get to frame 100 and uh, the cameraman takes a deep breath and holds himself quite still. I press I and it, I'm going to add a keyframe to all channels, bring them all down one at a time. And you can see we're going to get a, a slight fall off it. So it's going to slowly. Stop moving. And then if I want it to start moving again, I can just copy these ones. Come across to about here. Control C, Control V. You can see it gets slower. Stops. And then it'll start again. So we've combined the two, the best of both worlds, basically. We've got the, we've got the graph editor now. We've got the full power of keyframing which we couldn't have done before. Um, and we've got, once we've set it up once, we can then reuse this on any other object. So we can just rename this to um, camera controls. And then any other object I use or any other camera, I can create a new sphere and parent that camera to it and just put this geometry node modifier onto the new sphere and you're all set. And you're not limited to just using noise. You can use any other things you want because we've got the full power of all the maths nodes, um, sine waves, you know, all, all the other good stuff. And yeah, I hope that's useful. And don't forget, if you want to know more about geometry nodes, if you want to sort of be able to come up with these concoctions yourself, then I've actually made a video which is available. It's called EV Huge Oceans Part 2. And that is dedicated to geometry nodes. I spent a lot of time trying to come up with a, a way of explaining it that I think is probably 
the quickest way that somebody can learn how geometry nodes work. You can watch part one for free on my YouTube channel, and then you can grab part two from the website, which is 3d-illusions.co.uk. So I hope it's useful, and I'll see you next time.